So as some of you know, this is kind of a hot topic and I just want to go through it. Andrew Millwood, who's an incredible system designer, has pointed out some sort of errors and things. I think a lot of it spawned off a video I did, the Why Not To Use Low Loss Header video, which suggested putting close couple T's at the manifold. That was a quick sketch out at the end of a, you know, 30 minute long video. And I didn't go into detail on that. So I think I need to rectify that to stop people making mistakes. First of all, he points out that if you have this shortcut, the water to your radiators, it's, it's not gonna go there. It's just gonna take go through the shortcut. If you install this, and you, if you have a look on our installation page, we have stuff like this installed all the time. We always put a lock shield valve. Also, when you have a manifold, this is supposed to be a manifold here, you always have a zone valve. Um, obviously, we, we, we don't leave the zone valve here. We move the zone valve to here. So if there's no demand at the floor, that, that shuts off. So we can balance this, this leg, both sides of this leg to DT20. You could even put another zone valve here if you wanted to. So you've got equal amounts of flow. DT20 means whichever, however many am amount of kilowatts either side needs, it's got the correct amount. You wouldn't put a lock shield on this leg because you just balance at the, uh, at the radiators, obviously. His argument uh, additional to that is, even if you've got the flow required, when this valve uh, gets up to temperature and this valve starts to shut down, you're still gonna bypass back in here. So you've got double bypass, double distortion, which obviously is not good at all. And what could happen there is the water could, so we're going actually going around this way. Uh, the water could be returning back and increasing your boiler return. This is quite a common misconception in my opinion. You can't increase the boiler return. If you increase the boiler return, let's say we had 75 and 55. If, if we increase this to 58, the boiler will receive that. This will try to increase to 78. The boiler will modulate back and slow down the pump in, in response uh, to maintain its 75 degree flow temperature and this will return to 50 again. So the boiler will respond to the demand. This loop will increase in DT. So this loop might say increase to, uh, sort of decrease to DT15, it's increased flow rate relative to its output. So if that's gone to DT15, but the, the boiler pumps stepped back here, this flow rate will be lower. So it, this might go up to DT25. And the, the uh, result is that they cancel each other out and they have a DT of uh, 20 again at the boiler. So the boiler doesn't stop condensing. You cannot avoid mass flow. And the boiler typically has either a burner linked pump or a DT pump or something like that. So that's why I disagree with that as a kind of rule, but that could be one argument. But more importantly, just to rectify anything I've said historically about these designs, if you're going to all this effort to install this stuff, every time you do an installation, please assume that I'm telling you to install priority domestic hot water. But more importantly, that, that phrase isn't that important. It's that you're installing a load compensation system or a weather compensation system, or worst case, a lower heating flow temp. The reason being is if we've got 75 degree water coming in here and a 55 degree here, if we've got a DT7 on our manifold here, we'll have 55 return and 62 flow. That's too hot for this manifold, it'll close down. You never need 75 degree flow in this day and age. Pretty much everyone has double glazing now and has had loft insulation since 75 degree radiators were put in homes. We probably, 99% of homes could probably be fine with a flow temperature of 60. You could run your hot water off this, but that may be a bit sort of sketchy. Uh, and you also might want to take it below 60, but let's just take 60 for an example. If you turn your dial down to 60 degrees, our return, if we've got a correct size pump here, could be 40 if you can get it down that low. By the way, you don't get this DT by strangling down all of your uh, emitters. That's not how you get DT20. You get it by the pump settings in here. If you haven't got the pump settings adjustable in here, then you haven't got great boiler, but then you might have to sort of strangle. Uh, but you, you, you do that first, in that in combination with balancing. You don't strangle at the other end. Anyway, uh, if we've got a flow temperature of 60 here, and then we've got a 60 and 40 here, because we've balanced down for DT20, and we've got a DT7 on the underfloor heating. If you want DT7, DT10 is okay on a snail pattern. We'll have a 47 degree flow temperature. If our blending valve here, which is probably unnecessary in, in this case uh, to have this burning valve at all. It, it's probably going to be set to something like 50 or something like that. It's going to be fully open. It's going to be fully engaged. You're not going to have double distortion. In fact, there's no point in it even being there. The only reason I would say it there is perhaps is to comply with regulation or something just as an overheat protection. But there's other ways you can do that by putting like on a pipe stat or something connected to a normally open zone valve or some other 
variation. So, you know, I don't like manifolds personally. I think they're um, history. Uh, if you've got load or weather compensation and priority domestic hot water, priority domestic hot water, meaning you uh, either heat your hot water or your heating uh, in individual times. You, do, you don't heat them at the same time. When you do that, some boilers allow you to have a lower temperature for your heating. We should all be doing that as an absolute minimum, if not installing a different technology uh, ideally. And as this temperature drops throughout the year and the load drops throughout the year, this pump uh, will respond correspondingly to the load and, and drop its drop its flow rate. And because we've used a lock shield valve or a globe valve or some sort of balancing valve, they should stay roughly in equilibrium, just as your radiator should stay roughly in equilibrium as the flow rate changes throughout the year. So um, the idea is that a lower flow temperature means that your bending valve uh, never closes. If we have this bending valve set to say 55, that would mean it would only close down if it was getting up to 55. So you'd only start to see a problem at 55. If you had DT of seven quick mass, uh, that would mean you'd need a 48 return and a 68 degree flow. So if you can get down to 68 degrees, if you've got a a 55 degree bending valve, a 68 degree system, fine. If you've got uh, if you've got a 50 degree or 50 degree max flow temperature at your underfloor because you've got some sort of floor you have to be careful of, then that will have to be a 63 degree maximum at the heat source. But the other thing you could do instead is instead of running at DT7, if you did have a 68 degree heat source and you had a, a 50 degree max flow temperature, you could simply decrease your DT here. So it's kind of getting more and more complicated as we go along. So this would give a 68 degree flow temperature from the boiler, gives a 48 return. In theory, okay, this is an exaggerated example, but just show you the theory of it. You could have a DT of two uh, across your underfloor flow return, which actually with a, a continuously running system isn't you know completely out of the question but that would give you a 50 degree flow if you had dt uh, two across here because your returns always match in temperature uh, when you go through hydraulic separation just another point on that andrew and one or two others suggest doing this uh, for underfloor heating in the same in, instead in the same scenario which i don't think i see a problem with but i'm going to talk it through now uh, and see what comes out. They will say two. So this is the flow, this is the return along here. Just imagine lots of radiators on here. Uh, put a close couple T in here. This way, when your underfloor draws, it draws, and then it doesn't increase the return or act as a bypass when it's not drawing. That that does seem great. I'm just gonna talk it through though. So imagine we've got 70 degree flow and a 50 degree return. When this turns on, it will try to lower the return. So let's say this works at DT7, it will take in 50 and it will return at 43. The boiler will see the increased load of 43 uh, and its flow temperature will try to drop to 63. It will ramp up, increase its pump speed. Uh, and what will happen is it will go back to 70. This return will move to 57 and then this return here will be 50 again. That's how that system works. So now you have a higher mean temperature here. So these radiators will output more than you need and they may may turn off if they do turn off. I think Andrew puts in a spring bypass in here as well. So if that turns off, it bypasses and you still get flow to the um, underfloor heating system, which uh, that's like, yeah, I love that. It's just proper engineering, very clever. However, the radiators may have not cycled before, especially if you have load compensation, which we always suggest as, as part of, if you're doing any of these massive works, the priority domestic hot water for lower flow temperature or load compensation, weather compensation is a very small necessary upgrade you should always be making every single time. But they're running hotter than, than they need to. And actually this is probably, this is running much hotter than it needs to. So we're coming out of condensing. So with this more, in my opinion, elegant example, you can run with weather comp or low comp, and this will be on all of the time. Nice condensing, continuous. It's continuously piped, no hydraulic separation, direct connection, no loss through any separation. This increases the flow temperature or the mean water temperature of the radiators for less condensing, then shuts them down and will cycle them for the underfloor. So uh, I've just figured that out as I'm saying it. So it could be errors, um, let me know. Lastly, just as we're on this subject, the actual ideal, if you can afford, and if you've got the room and blah, 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 is to, sorry, my kids are here now, is to instead to do the close couple T alternative, which I have got another video for her on YouTube called close couple T alternative, which is this. It's an electronic blending valve. So you can set the, the boiler to the higher flow temperature required for radiators and set its own curve for the underfloor heating. And then all you do is, so that's an electronic bypass valve, which changes the flow temperature here by blending some of its own return with its own flow. This needs an additional pump. And then you put in a, a T 
here and here and join them together via a lock shield or balancing valve so it can if this ever fully opens it doesn't pull on this circuit as you'll see in the other video it recirculates some of its water so it's, it's never tugging on the radiators what the way you'd set that up is you'd have this valve fully open that valve fully open you'd open this valve until you've got dt20 from here to here ish none of these numbers are accurate <laughs> You'll never get precisely, and the way I say the boiler responds, it, that won't happen instantly. This is, uh, the reason I give numbers is to give the theory. We have to have something isolated in order to explain the theory. In reality, all of that be a lot slower and a lot more sort of dynamic. So yeah, this is probably a better design, better than that maybe. Actually, there's a few more uh, examples you can put on here. You can put a zone valve on here, but it's probably going outside of uh, where I want to go with this video. I think that's probably quite complicated, but I hope it makes sense. I'm sure uh, Andrew or whoever's got some questions or, or points faults in this, which I'm more than happy for people to point faults, so we can go back, revisit and rectify, please do.